ha ha, we are live. It's not exactly the shot I want. That's a better shot. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, there's people back there. I want to not get the people in, but I want it. I'll take it. That'll work. I can hide. I can maybe scoot over a little bit. There we go. That works. Okay, let's see if that works. Hey, guys. How's it going, Lauren? It's good to see you. Let me wave. Let me wave to... Ah, oh, Velda. Girlfriend. It's been a long time. Okay. Are y'all ready? I have some lessons. So check it out. I've been following this woman who um, really teaches... Oh, the wind is so strong out here. She teaches weight loss. And first off, look where I live. I want you guys to see my building. Isn't this fun? This is uh, the outside of my building. I'm just hanging out. I'm hanging out because it's so beautiful outside right now. Isn't that gorgeous, Avelda? It is so beautiful outside right now, and um, tomorrow is going to be pissing rain here, so I kind of really want to feel um, the warmth. Like, I've got short sleeve shirts on. It feels great. Okay, but here's what I want to talk about today. I have been following this uh, woman, and I really like what she's teaching in regards to weight loss. And basically, it's the same thing that I recommend to all of my clients, but she really just focuses on the diet aspect. And what she does, and what I say, is like, eat however the hell you want. If you want to be a vegetarian, or a vegan, or, or a paleo, or keto, or all the crazy fucking ways people feel like they need to eat certain ways. But if you just like get the sugar out, if you get the junk out, it is gorgeous, isn't it, Evelyn? Love it. If you get the junk out, meaning the highly processed sugar and the highly processed carbs, and you remove that shit from your diet, everything changes because it changes your biochemistry. And I talked about this on the very first day of this countdown. If you guys remember, you can go back and find it. Um, or you can send me a DM and I will, um, I'll send you a link because I put the whole thing up on my website. So all the teachings are there for free. So send me a DM if you want one, like a direct message, a PM, a personal message, whatever it's called. But here's the thing. I love her style. I love what she's teaching from a very practical like sick of obsessing over food, it changes your biochemistry, um, and and you can lose weight. Like these, this is a true deep strategy of how to lose weight because when you stop obsessing over food, physically, chemically, biochemically, you start to get your hormones regulated. It's a big deal. But here's the problem with that: is that it, like, doing this kind of stuff. There's totally an airplane going over right now. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Sorry, I'll try to talk louder. Just focusing on what you're gonna eat or when you're gonna work out or how much sleep you're gonna get or whatever boundaries, all of those pieces are from your prefrontal cortex or from the top part of your brain. And that is only responsible for 20% of your behavior. Here, look, I actually, I got so excited to do this, I drew a thing. This is your brain. I'm such not an artist, but I really want you guys to see this, okay? If this is like, see all this black part up here, not this, that's supposed to be your spinal cord, okay? But all up here, this is your prefrontal cortex. It's the part of your mind that thinks. It's the part of your mind that has choice. It's the part of your mind that holds your willpower, okay? This part of your brain is only responsible for 20% of your freaking behavior, okay? So right here is where you decide to go on a diet. You decide to stop eating sugar. You decide to stop eating refined flour. All the things that this very, like this, this woman who I'm talking about, she's a psychology professor. She's got a PhD. She understands research. She, like her, her, she is sound, but she's not addressing that only 20% of like, oh, it comes from here. Let me say hi to Ina. It's always fun. This is not the part that is in charge. The part that's in charge is your limbic system. That's supposed to be the pink kind of purple color, which is your emotional brain. And that red part right here, which is supposed to be the back part of your nervous system. I, again, I'm not very good at drawing, but this stuff right here, that's your primal brain. The, the, the limbic system, your emotional brain and your primal brain are responsible for the other 80% of your behavior. So let me give you another example. I got really excited here. Look at this, look at this triangle. This top part of the triangle right here represents your prefrontal cortex. It's 20%. I wonder if that's backwards for you. It looks backwards for me. 20% of your behavior, all of this stuff down here, this stuff down here is 80% of your behavior, your limbic system, your emotional brain, and your primal brain right here, okay? That is a problem if all you're doing is focusing up here, okay? So you're laughing at me, Lindsay, that's cool. I don't blame you, I would laugh too. I'm trying to like get this like across like your thick skull and my thick skull because I get caught up in watching women who are really smart, or I shouldn't say women, but anybody who has like a sound 
eating approach, uh, and I get really caught up and I get excited about it, but I know the truth. I know that if I don't have this part on board, this shit doesn't matter, okay? And that's what I do. This is like literally what I do for my clients. This is what love it to lose it, my love it to lose it mastery system this is what we do. I'll tell you more about this, but if you understand this, you won't feel so bad come the holidays when all of your emotions take over and all of a sudden you're like, wah, 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 and I'm, I'm stuck in my emotions. And then also your primal brain is all, oh my God, let me say hello to Edgardo. Hola, Edgardo. Okay, your primal brain is the part that w- makes you want to be safe. So your limbic system is all about your emotions. You've got to be able to feel. And your primal brain right down here, this piece right here, If you do not feel safe enough, if your primal brain does not feel safe enough, you will never, ever lose the weight because holding on to extra weight is your unconscious brains. It is its safety mechanism to expand your body in order to be safe. Literally in the animal kingdom, almost always the bigger animal wins. So it doesn't really matter how much you want to lose 50 pounds or 40 pounds or 100 pounds or whatever, if there's not a level of safety. And again, 80% of your behavior is here. So what we do is we try these top approaches. We work on food and diet and exercise and sleep and we work on our boundaries and we work on our goals and we work on our willpower, all of these things and we try to make better choices, but it won't go down. It won't cross this line. We try and we try and it doesn't get there because What's happening up here are these blockers, actual blockers in the way of you getting to where you want to go, okay? Let's talk about these blockers today. I know I feel like I've already explained this in the series that I put together, but I thought maybe the visual would make it better. So let's look at the blockers. I wrote some of these blockers down. What you need to understand is that blockers come from past experiences. The biggest blockers often happen in childhood. Um, Let me just kind of... Put this up right here. So divorce, you can see where my fingers are. If you are if you either divorced yourself or I think even more traumatic, I don't know if it's even more traumatic, I know it was for me when my parents divorced. If you are a child of a divorced family, it creates a deep wound inside of you. It is a past experience that has created a block, a sense of not being safe and a sense of not being able to feel the intense feelings that came up back then So your primal brain did whatever it could to feel safe because it didn't think the emotions that were coming up were safe enough to experience, okay? Divorce or breakup. Like if you're an adult and you just go through a bad breakup, man, I have been through that and it is like sent me to the floor, dropped me to my knees, uh, sent me out of commission, man. Uh, There was not enough uh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream for me to, to, to go through when I went through like some big, big breakups volatile family house if there's a death in your family you guys can see this I can't even read my hand a big move if you did a giant move um, there there's a lot of research that shows like death and moving and there's one other those three are the most stressful things that you could give your system right Um, let's see if growing up if you grew up in a house where the rules were really really strict so you're you're getting smothered I know that was my case or if you grew up in a house that was really loosey-goosey it was as if your parents didn't even care so that that's a situation of boundaries you never actually learned appropriate boundaries that is a past experience that creates these blockers that make it next to impossible to go down as soon as you try to do all these cool things up here like take care of yourself in your prefrontal cortex you're thinking really hard about it things get blocked and you can't get it all the way in these the subconscious part is what creates the self-sabotaging behaviors please remember though that the self-sabotaging behaviors were put in place by your primal brain to keep you safe and alive it's not like they're mean it's just their strategies that don't work anymore I mean if emotional eating and overeating is your way to deal with things then and it, it doesn't feel great because then your body's expanding you're like damn it I don't want to deal with this anymore right but if you're only focused on the diet and exercise I promise it'll never work research shows over and over again that you are 99% likely to fail that means maybe you'll lose the weight but if you do you're 99% likely to gain it all back again so we want to be able to get past these blockers and the very first thing to know is to bring these blockers to your recognition um, alcoholism and addiction so if you have ever been if you grew up in a family with alcoholics or just let's not even say alcohol let's just say addiction in general because addiction can be chemical so addiction can be like drugs alcohol that's like chemical addictions but addiction can be behavioral this is where it gets sneaky it was really sneaky for me too 
behaviors are overspending money, gambling, over debting. Um, 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 oh, I already said overspending, didn't I? Like hoarding, like people that are hoarders. That's a, that's a very addictive behavior if you watch what they're doing. Um, how people try to control relationships, right? Where there has a sense of obsessiveness and control over another person, all right? This is how we use other people and we, we use them as our drug. So there is such a thing as called love addiction and sex addiction, okay? And they are both very like intertwined in terms of it becomes an obsession. One is an obsession over like needing somebody to fill you and the other, which is love addiction, and then the other is a complete disconnect thinking, well, I don't need anybody, so I'll just get my thrills by just having meaningful sex. And so, but both are addictive because they, food, overeating is an addictive, it's, it's a, let me say, oh, let me say hi to Gina. Very cool. I haven't seen you since our high school reunion, girl. How you doing? Gina's, I think, a badass lawyer these days. She's killing it. So, so these are big things. If you grew up with any form of addiction in your home or you're surrounded by people that have this, then you likely, um, you likely have these past behaviors, these past experiences that create the blocks that don't let you get where you need to be, okay? More that are food related. I'm gonna go there with you guys today. So forced to clean up your plate. If you've ever been forced when you were a kid, remember, you can't leave the table until your plate is clean. That is a past experience that literally creates a block. If like we're talking specifically around your body, being connected to your body, liking your body and weight loss. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, if let's say, here's another big one. Let's say you lose weight. Let me say hi to Elizabeth. Thanks for coming on Elizabeth. Let's say you lose weight and you feel great and you're looking super hot and sexy and then something negative happens and your primal brain gets activated and realizes, oh my God, it's not safe for me to be this size. Guess what'll happen? You will gain the weight again. The best example I have is a client of mine from a long time ago who was so powerful. She was like this like, you know, executive CEO type woman killing it in a man's world in Silicon Valley. Um, and she lost all of this weight and she was like gorgeous, like she was gorgeous no matter what. And then she lost just a ton of weight and she got so much attention. It was just so much. And she loved it actually. She kind of worked with that. But then what ended up happening is um, I think she went on a trip with some girlfriends and she, all of a sudden she had all the sexual energy from men coming at her and she did not know what to do with it. She did not feel safe. She did not trust their sexual energy coming at her and she did not trust her own ability for boundaries with her own sexual energy. She was happily married and so it freaked her the fuck out. Sorry, that's a big deal, cussing. And she put the weight on immediately. Woman lost like over 120 pounds and by the time she came to me, she'd already put on like I think 60 pounds more. Desperate to not have the weight on but until she gets rid of this blocker, guys, look. Let me hit the low power mode. Look, that's a blocker right here. She wants the weight to be gone, but she has not dealt with a very big piece of something that happened in her primal brain, this part down here that just wants to keep you safe and alive. She never dealt with it. So these are like real, these are why the woman I was telling you about at the beginning, she's awesome. I love her. She's amazing. Um, I'll tell you, her, her, her whole system is called Bright Line Eating. Her name is Susan Pierce Thompson, I think. She's a PhD psychologist. I love it. I love psychology. I love research. Um, and, and the only part of the subconscious mind that I've seen that she talks about, this part right here, is just habit creation. Well, habit creation is like of one part, but it's usually not the deeper parts that are going to keep you really, really stuck. You can create amazing habits in your life, but if one of these weight loss blockers right here comes up, Again, in an emotional standpoint, I guarantee you, you will get caught right here. Your brain will go, this is not safe. You will put the weight back on. This is just how it works, guys. This is how we roll. Hold on, I'm not done. Uh, oh, here's the last piece I want to share with you is that the past experiences that create the blocks to you living in a body that you absolutely freaking love. Let me say hi to Jamie. Jamie in Mexico. I miss my friend. Is if you have ever been bullied or if you have any sexual uh, wounding, sexual trauma, and this is huge. So John Bradshaw, huge psychotherapist, tons of research, has done so much correlation with any level of sexual wounding, sexual violation, bound, sexual boundary violation, whether it's physical or not, that creates a system inside. I think I just saw Brenda show up. Let me say hi to Brenda. Brenda, it's so good to see you, darling. Let me say hi. Literally, will create a block because it is so intense in the primal brain that it doesn't feel safe, that it doesn't feel safe. And so safety, again, 
you are safe. In the animal kingdom, the bigger, the bigger animal almost always wins. And it is a safety mechanism. So how do you do this? How do you make this work? How do you get this triangle that I was showing you with all of these 20% of the behaviors, the actual diet you try to go on, the exercise program that you try to go on, right? All of these things here. If you're doing that, it's called a top-down approach. You're starting from the top of your brain and you're going down, right? But you get blocked right here because of these blockers. Well, you have to actually also add the practices that are bottom up. And the more you do these bottom up approaches, these practices, these bottom up approaches that teach your primal brain safety, that teach you your limbic system, your emotional brain that you, like my, my system is called the feel it to heal it method. Like you learn how to feel it and then you can heal it. And it's once you get into this, and here's where the magic is. The magic is when you get more of these bottom up approaches. So you're learning how to tap into the primal brain. You're learning how to feel your feelings instead of disconnecting from them, right? And then going to whatever cho whatever your choice of addiction is, um, uh, or obsession, whatever you want to call it, um, where you actually feel your feelings and where your primal brain feels safe enough. And it is, it is very powerful. When you mix these bottom up approaches with the top down approaches, you have a winning like success. You have a winning strategy. You have a way to not only use the strategies that you need, your prefrontal cortex, your thinking mind, so that way you really truly can make the habit changes. Let me say hi to Natalie. Hi Natalie, thanks for coming on and watching. But now you are removing the weight loss blockers. You're removing the blockers that keep you in a body that you hate, that keep you numb, that keep you disconnected, that keep you not really living the life that you want to live. You're removing these blockers, doing these bottom up approaches. You mix these two together. And the other thing I want to say about these approaches right here, it rewires the brain, the neurons, all of the neural, neural patterning and neural connection. And when you can wire, the top part to your mid part to your back part to your mid part to your top part to your back over and over and over again using top down approaches and bottom up approaches it it, it it turns you into a more whole being you're less fragmented you know what i mean so that's what love it to lose it is and uh it's really a powerful process to go through during the holiday season why because the holiday season is one of the most powerful powerfully emotional times of the year, whether you want it or not. So whether you completely disconnect from it, which I've spent many a years completely disconnecting from this time of the year, um, there's a sense of isolation that does not feel good, or whether you're completely submersed in the drama and the crazy of your life and in your family, that's all it's so deep and so big and so emotional, it's almost hard to handle. And I don't mean negative, I mean negative or positive. What I mean is like there's a range of emotions and it's hard to feel all the way through if indeed you use any kind of behavior or substance to check out and not actually feel what you're feeling, okay? So um, that's what I have for you and I will show up tomorrow, Halloween, and we'll do uh, one last thing that I think is really gonna like just prime you and prep you for, for the holiday season. And, uh, and then we'll go on Thursday, I'll do like a full blown, like a teaching and a webinar where I'll tie it all in together and I'll show you and I'll share with you like how Love It To Lose It works. And okay, I'm finished. Mwah. Have a beautiful evening.